Welcome back to Sing with Cinderella. If you're new to my series, thanks so much for stopping by. In this series, I help singers of all different skill levels reach their full singing potential. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite app for sheet music. I'm going to be sharing the singer perspective, but this app is for all kinds of musicians. As an educator, as a student, as a performer, this app is for you. I'm going to share my favorite features, why I think this app is so phenomenal, all of the little tips and tricks um, that you will want to know in purchasing the app and using the app. Maybe you'll find something new in this, in this video. So I'll give a general overview. And right now, I'd just like to start with talking about the organization that comes in this app, with organizing all of your different kinds of PDFs and all of your sheet music. So let's go ahead and open the app and you can follow along with me. So at the very top, if I just tap, I'm going to be able to pull up all of my music. So I have all of my scores, 787 across a couple of years of my life. These are the scores that I've accumulated from different projects, from school. I'm in school studying music. So for different classes, different worksheets um, and different recital repertoire, different choral ensembles that I've been a part of. Um, that's how I've made up that number, as well as some music from the past that I've put into the app. Um, so rather than having to look through 787 scores, I'm able to simplify that with the app, with this organization system. You can put down the composer. You, it's going to categorize it alphabetically for you. If you want specifically something by Florence Price, I'm going to be able to go to the P's here, and I'm going to look up -da 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 -da, Florence Price, Poulenc. Um, so I can find my piece by Florence Price in there. Now, not everything in my music is categorized like this because it, it is time consuming, but you have all these options if you'd like to use them. You can do genres, you can do tags, you can do labels. For genres, let's say I'm looking for specific musical theater pieces for an audition. I can go to the musical theater genre. Um, for tags, if I'm looking to do a German art song specifically, not just any old art song, but a German one or a French one, I can put in a tag like that, or you can look at labels. Uh, let's say I'm a teacher and I really want to categorize my music for my students so that it makes it super easy to pick out repertoire. What I can do is I can put that extra information like the key of the piece, um, the difficulty level here, the rating, um, different labels and tags so that it helps me in assigning repertoire to my students if it's a level two or if it's a level three, a more advanced student. So you have those options if you, if you would like to use them in the organization part of the app. For labels, maybe you want to organize by time period. Maybe you want to organize by what kind of a piece it is to you. If it's a crowd pleaser that you want to play for people at a party, at a dinner party, or if it's an opener or a closer and you're trying to put together a set of repertoire if you are a choral conductor or a music director. So for some of your larger scores, like let's say you have an anthology and you put the entire PDF into this app, or you have a uh, piano vocal score of a musical. So I'll just go ahead and pull one up. Uh, let's look at Cinderella. <laughs> so I have the Cinderella piano vocal score on here, which is like a 90 page document, but rather than tap, 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 tapping through to get to one song in the entire score. Rather, I can go to the bookmarks that I've created with each of the songs. So let's say I want to look at the princes having a ball. There it is, rather than having to tap through. Now, with an electronic version, um, a copy of the music, you might be thinking, oh, that's, that's a lot of tapping to do. So instead of having a literal bookmark on this electronic kind of uh, way of looking at the music, you can still have that feature being able to go directly to that page for you will, but it's all electronic. So you can have your notes, you can have your highlighting, you can have your tempos, you can have the metronome, you can have the keyboard, which I'll talk a little bit about later in this video. So I've talked a little bit about the organization. If you want to look at all of your scores and look through that master list of 787 scores in my case, but if you're performing um, and you have this certain set list that you, you, you're doing these certain pieces, only these five pieces, you don't want to have to go through your entire repertoire to find those pieces and search for them. Although it is easy in the app because you can search or you can find them by composer, for example, it's still going to be easier if they're all just right next to each other and you can go boom, 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 practice through them, put them in an order that you want. So you have this feature called set lists. So I have set lists for different years of my life, different years of my repertoire. I also have different 
performances. Um, I have my, my favorites that I like to sing. I have favorites that I like to play on the piano. So you can do something like that. If you want to have like a dinner party list um, of all songs that people know and would like to sing along to, you can have a mix like that. Um, if you are practicing for your string quartet, but you're also in a choral ensemble, you want to keep those separate, but you also want to keep that, those, uh, those repertoire pieces all together, you can put them in your set list. So these are kind of like having a binder, but you're not going to break your back taking all of these binders to rehearsal, having to lug around a crate of books or anthologies or binders. That's a lot. Instead, <laughs> you have it all on your device right here, all in this app. It's incredible and I haven't looked back since I've started using the app. A nice thing about having all of your scores in the app is that what if you get to the gig and someone requests a piece, but you know it, but you don't have it with you. Oops, I didn't bring that binder with me. I'm sorry, but I can't sing it with, um, for you. But if you have it in the app, you can just go, oh yeah, sure. I know it in my heart. I can sing it. I can just pull it up. I'll search it and boom, it's right there. As a student or as a performer, even a teacher, it's also fun to look back at your performances and say, oh, I can't remember um, what that piece was, but it's so lovely. I'd love to just take a trip down memory lane and play that one back. Or um, I want to put another song on my recital, but I can't quite remember what that piece was. But I know I performed it at this specific recital or it was at this semester this year. So I can go ahead and find that piece of music that I'm trying to find. And I have it all listed out in my set list. So I've given a general overview of the app and talked a little bit about the features, but now I'd like to show you my favorite parts of the app and why I think it's so special to use this app and how it's such an incredible learning tool. So at the top of that list is the visual learning for me. What's nice about the app is that you can take notes directly onto the sheet music. So let's say I wanna go breathe. I also have options, I have colors. I like to color code things. By the end of learning a piece of music, my sheet music basically looks like an abstract piece of art because there are so many different lines, so many different colors, but it all makes sense to me because I have a color coding system. Um, I like to highlight things. Uh, maybe I really wanna highlight that word. You can also change these colors at the top here. So you can also include um, some symbols. So maybe you don't wanna write them by hand, but you want them to be super neat. So you wanna put a one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. You wanna put a double flat, but you're not great at drawing them. So you'd rather insert a stamp you can also change the color of the stamp through this over here. You can change the size, which is awesome. So you have so many options and you can also get more pro stamps if you get the pro membership, which I personally don't have because I don't need it, but it is an option for you if you'd like to use that. So you can change the size and the colors of all these different kinds of pens. Uh, the size, boom, color. I'm gonna go for more of a lighter green, awesome. And then as far as the highlighters go, you don't wanna completely cover the text or completely cover the notes if you're highlighting something. So what's nice is that you can actually change the transparency. So this is um, basically, this would completely cover the notes and then this is more uh, see-through, it's more transparent. So you have options there. You can also have a ruler if you wanted to do a straight line, boom but I'm gonna undo that because I don't need that. <laughs> and then let's say I wrote in this breathe here, but I wanna move it. I didn't put it in the right place or I'm gonna have to make another note. So I need to leave space for something else. So I'm gonna put that, oh, I actually want it on the rest here. So see what I did there? I can move it around. But if I did that in pencil with real sheet music, I mean real music, I mean like, you know, paper sheet music, not that this is fake music, but <laughs> um, that would take erasing, erasing, and then you could still see through it. This is so much more organized and neat. You can also um, type your text. So let's say you had a translation and you wanted to put it in. I could say, I love um, something. <laughs> and that would be the translation. And then I could also move it around. You can also change the size of this text. You can change the color. Right now it's blue. Um, so you have that option there. I'm gonna go ahead and undo. I don't need these things on my music. In addition to the visual learning tools, what I think you're going to find super helpful when you're practicing and learning pieces of music are um, these practice tools. So rather than pulling out a different device or having to be by a keyboard, have an actual metronome, it's all gonna be right in 
the app. Super, super helpful. So if you actually click on this suitcase looking thing, suitcase looking symbol in the top right hand corner, you can go to keyboard. And what's nice about this is that you can still see the sheet music with the keyboard on your screen. So it's gonna pop up on the bottom of your screen. It can also be bigger if you, if you flip your tablet the other way. But let's say it's just gonna be portrait for now and I need to give myself the starting pitch because I'm not by a keyboard. Done, awesome. And maybe, I, you know, I, I can't quite get um, an interval. I have to remind myself, wait, what was that again? So I can go ahead and just play that little phrase. Awesome, isn't that? So, and then you can close out of it and you can continue to click through your different music. Another tool that's really helpful to use is the metronome at the very top of the screen. It has its own symbol. Um, and there you'll also access the pitch and tuner. But let's go ahead and talk about this, this metronome. What's nice about it is that you can tap the, tap the beat. And then you can also have it be audible so you can hear it. You can also do visible where it's not going to play the sound, but rather um, on the very edges of my screen, if you can see it's pulsing. So you can see the beat, you can feel the beat that way. If you're doing some silent practicing, you have a roommate around and you don't want to turn on the sound and have that duh, duh, duh while they're sleeping. Um, and you can also do both. If you needed a visual representation of the beat, but also you want to hear it in your ear. So that's a cool feature. You can also use um, the pitch pipe and you can also use the tuner if you're tuning a guitar, or your, um, whatever you need to be tuning, your instrument. So that's also a helpful tool, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. <laughs> now, uh, lastly, with the practice tools, I love using the recording feature. So let's say it's actually the same location where you're gonna get um, the keyboard. So that's that, that uh, suitcase symbol. So I'm gonna go to record. And then, so maybe you're in a rehearsal and the conductor, or the director, shows you a certain part, a certain rhythm that's gonna be tricky for you to grasp. So you're gonna go ahead and just record it if the conductor obviously allows you to do that or if you're just recording yourself and you wanna see your progress. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a recording right now. This is testing one, two, three, four. Bum, 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 bum. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save that as <laughs> recording. <laughs> Um, and then it's all going to live on this document. So if you use voice memos or you use another app for your, your recordings, unfortunately with that, you're gonna have so many different recordings for so many different things if you use that app often. With this, it's gonna live on your music. So now I can go to this bottom um, little list and I would have all of the recordings if I had multiple recordings. Let's say I had practice sessions that I was recording or um, practice run through so that I can hear how I've been progressing through on this piece specifically. So I can go ahead and listen back to it. Take a recording right now. This is testing one, two, three, four. And then I can skip. Bum, bum, bum. And there you have it. And then what's cool is that I can actually share this um, with other people. I can email it to myself. So that's a really cool feature for growing your progress, listening back as a teaching tool. Um, if you want your students to, to give them permission to do that if they use this app, something that you can take notice of and, and utilize yourself, um, or as, even as a student to record yourself and listen back. This really is an all-encompassing app. So rather than you know getting the metronome app, the keyboard, the recordings, also inserting the sheet music. So you might have a ready PDF and you're just putting it into the app, but you might have to scan documents into the app. You're scanning sheet music, um, that you already own and you've already purchased, but they're physical copies and you want to use them on your tablet in the app for score. So what you can do is actually go to scan here and then you can scan them. You can also insert from your camera roll. Um, you can insert a file that way. And also if you wanted to just put down some music, do some notation, write a little melody, you can insert a template. So you can do a blank template. There are uh, different kinds of staff paper that you'd like. So let's say I wanted to do this one, save as blah, 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 <laughs> something random. And here you have it and I can write in some notes. Oh, it's on that right now, but I can just do that. And then, yep, awesome. And then I can save that and then I can share it with others, um, a little melody that I composed. Hey, can you check this out? What do you think of this? 
all super easy. You can share that via email, share that through multiple sources. If you use other apps like NoteFlight, MusicNotes.com, you're in luck because you will be actually be able to import from those, those apps into Forescore. So as you can see, these are the, the apps that sync up with that. And you can put them in. All of my music that I've purchased through MusicNotes.com, I can also view in Forescore rather than using two separate apps or maybe printing out the music and then having to scan it. If I purchase it on MusicNotes.com, I'm able to insert it into Forescore and put in my set list and, and categorize it in my own way. In terms of sharing music, if you're working with other collaborators, if you are in a string quartet and you wanna share your notes with your other quartet members or an ensemble, what's really cool is that you can share it super easily. You can do a PDF, you can do an annotated PDF, so that's something that would have your notes, or you want the plain PDF, no notes, no markings, or if they also use the app Fourscore, you can share them with them the Fourscore document so they can move around the markings that you've made and make it fit best for them, um, erase things, and so they would have a little bit more flexibility with that because they're also a Fourscore user, but let's say you're a companist or, or your other collaborators don't use Fourscore, that's okay too because you're able to share with them a PDF, an annotated PDF, or a plain PDF. Um, I, when I'm talking about the string quartet, another really unique feature about Fourscore is that you can do score leading, um, score following with a group leader where one person is controlling the flip of the pages and it's linking with everyone else that's using Fourscore so that it's all in sync. One of the last things I'd like to share is being able to track your progress in the app. So let's say you're working towards a certain goal, a daily goal or a weekly goal, you can actually set that in your dashboard here. And you can also see all of your kinds of analytics about your practice time, about how much, uh, how many views or how much time for each piece, a set list. So you can go to your reports. I'll show you one of my reports from July. July was a pretty practice heavy month. So I had 21 hours of practice time on the app. And you can look at how much time I spent from the top, um, walking my baby back home. I spent a lot of time practicing that one for all we know. Um, and then I can scroll down here and you can also see the set list time. So maybe you have repertoire that you're practicing for different performances and different set lists. And maybe you're like, okay, well I spent eight hours on this, but I only spent six hours on this. And it's clear that I need to put in those extra two hours on that other second set of repertoire. Um, so that's a helpful tool for you to just take notice and keep yourself motivated. You can set notifications so that you can get those practice goals delivered to you and make sure that you're really marking those and, and keep on improving your skill set through the app not only as a learning tool, a visual tool, but also something that's gonna keep you going and keep progress, kind of like a fitness app in that way. Isn't this app incredible? It is only $14.99 in the App Store. I'm so happy with this purchase. I've had this app for a couple of years now and I've never looked back. In the grand scheme of things, I will say that the big purchase is the device that the app is going to be on. Um, and then also, if you want to have that pro version, it's gonna be $9.99 billed yearly, which is not a ton of money when you compare it to other subscriptions like Netflix or Hulu or ESPN, Disney Plus, um, a gym membership. So it's $9.99 per year. I only have the $14.99 one-time purchase. Now it's not a part of the app, but I really recommend the Apple Pencil to go along with the app because of the note-taking um, capabilities that come with that. And it's just not the same as using your finger. Um, it's going to be a lot more organized if you're using that Apple Pencil. And it's more like note-taking, old-fashioned note-taking, but you have the capabilities that come along with everything being virtual and being organized in that way. In summary, my favorite feature is just the organization. It keeps everything so simplified for you, easy to find the music that you need, the set lists for performances, for gigs, ju even just for fun if you're using this app. Um, to have that dinner party playlist. And using all those learning tools, the recording, the metronome, the keyboard, it really makes your life easier as a performer, as an educator, or even as a student. I think that this app, it has a little bit of something for everyone to really use and take advantage of and get the best results as a musician. The sharing is super easy, the staying motivated, just to recap a few things, but this app is incredible. Let me know down below what you're thinking right now, if you're on the fence about getting the app, 
What are your thoughts? Would you like to see more videos on these kinds of things, app reviews, music technology, how to make your life easier as a musician? I'm happy to do those. I also have vocal technique videos on my channel, performing arts college tips, music education. So go ahead and check those out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give this a like. Subscribe to my channel for more content coming your way. And I hope to see you next time on Sing with Cinderella.